Good morning everyone. Um, before we carry on, everyone like, subscribe, get uh, the little bell icon there, click that, it will allow videos to pop up and you'll get informed all the time anytime we make any new product. Product, new videos. It's been a long morning already. Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Black Marlin. Now, that probably inspires quite a lot of uh, jitters in some. Some people are thinking, hey, that's one of the species I've always wanted to target. In terms of your your big game fishing, your you know you see the old films of the big Penn Senator or Penn International guy cranking away there, got his uh, white rod or whatever, and uh, waves splashing over the back of the boat. That's kind of where where the big game fishing sits. The black marlin, other than the bluefin tuna, is probably really at the top between the two for size. Anyway, black marlin, uh, Makaira indica. So that's where another fishing brand gets the name Makara from, won't mention who. They are elongate in shape, everyone generally knows what a marlin looks like. Quite a long yet streamlined body. Uh, the scale is actually quite interesting in shape, it's got a little, almost a little thorn to it, so really really streamlined, it reduces the surface area, go all into that. Um, the top jaw is elongated into a bill that's very very rough, grass like they actually can use that to to whack into stuff and knock it unconscious. When it comes to handling them, please guys use a, a, a good quality landing glove uh, like the mustad or your cap if possible or anything that you can wrap around that's going to be just protect your hands otherwise it will rip your hands to shreds. Okay, color wise you're looking a top dark bottom bottom light, white belly on the bottom, top is going to be a bluey black in live specimens. As soon as they die they go white and the Japanese actually have a name for them. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. That means white marlin. So once they've died they go completely pale. All the chromatophores sort of uh, expand it will be. Yeah, expand and then the whole color looks just pale white overall. Your obviously snout in the front, shorter bottom lip, very large mouths. They're able to engulf gigantic bait. They feed on tuna and squid and all sorts, big, big baits they can eat. Um, they've got a lunate tail, so it's shaped like that. Obviously same length, not like me, which got a long, uh, short thumb and long uh, forefinger. The tails I get, that's for high speed uh, maneuverability and high speed uh, movement. That it's, it's not a soft, soft tail that can flex. It's a very, very rigid tail. It's exactly the same as on your tuna species. In terms of size, blue marlin, uh, blue marlin really, black marlin get to four and a half meters, around about there, four and a half, which is an absolute giant, it's about 710 kilos. Um, interestingly, the record was caught off the coast of Peru in 1953, that was a black marlin of 708 kilos, which is, if you just, if you try and think of the size of that fish, it's phenomenal, I mean the, the, the fights that guys have with these things are hour hour long sessions it's more of a test match than a t20 really your maturity wise they matured around about i think it's about 200 kilos for your your females and about 70 odd kilos for your males um, they also they get to about 20 years old for the females and about 13 for the males so they are quite a long um long living species they they have done some tag and release starts on them and they are, have been recaptured so which is very nice to see because previously it was thought that once they've been caught you know six hour fights they pretty much just rocket down to the bottom but the guys have gotten a lot better they, all the competitions now use circle hooks um, so they hook them in the corner instead of into the stomach um, or hook over the bowl they reviving the fish for longer it's only catch and release competitions generally except for your bigger uh, fish like granders and things like that where uh, people obviously want to want to show off the record um, in terms of where you're going to catch them i personally have not caught a marlin so i won't attempt to tell you guys where to catch them or how to catch them conas and live baits are going to be your best bets from theory uh, Smaller yellowfin tuna and things like that, obviously up to about 20 kilos, you can really trawl them for, for these big marlin. And big, big heavy tackle. The heavier you can go, the better. Lots of line capacity, strong connections um, are absolutely vital for these things because you are playing in the big leagues when you're targeting them. Um, in terms of the sea, you're going to get them pretty much everywhere north of your 30 degree latitudes. 
um, tropical and temperate waters. They're going to be migrating in summer to the more temperate waters. So they'll move obviously northwards um, into the slightly cooler waters in summer and then in winter they come back into the tropical waters. It's nice and warm, it's more pleasant for them. Like we mentioned, big, uh, big prey method or big prey items that they're going to be feeding on. Uh, high speed for trawling wise, except with live baits of two degree. Obviously, you can pull as fast as you can pull a live tuna. And yeah, they pretty much spawn all year round. It's a fascinating species. They, there's a lot of uh, research that's actually got into them. And yeah, just a giant, giant species that deserves all the respect in the world because they are the biggest fish we can really target, um, other than sharks, of course, but the biggest fish. So yeah, guys, the black marlin, Makaira indica. Cheers.